good morning. It's great to be back in, in Polk County. I come bearing gifts, and we're happy to be able to make a, a great announcement here today. <laughs> But before I do, I want to recognize uh, uh, some great folks in my administration and also some, some other folks here. Um, uh, we have uh, the Department of Economic Opportunity Secretary Dane Eagle, our FDOT Secretary Kevin Tebow, and then our Secretary of Commerce uh, Jamal Sal. Uh, we also have Representatives Bell and Hawkins. We have City of Winter Haven Mayor Pro Tem uh, Nathaniel Birdsong, and we have members of the Winter Haven City Commission. So I want to thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, we are going to be announcing today and then throughout the week uh, a number of, of initiatives uh, designed to support uh, infrastructure and, and job training and job growth in the state of Florida. Um, and here in, in Polk County with, with Central Florida is a, is a great growth opportunity. You know, we had a lot of good proposals uh, to seek support for infrastructure funding, uh, and the city of Winter Haven uh, was one of the top ones that we were able to see. And so uh, as you see opportunities to really capitalize on a lot of momentum that we have, of course, throughout the whole state of Florida, but particularly in this critical Central Florida region, uh, we want to take advantage of that. And so Winter Haven um, is a great community. It's a very fast-growing community. In fact, the census data showed uh, uh, if you include the whole Lakeland, Winter Haven metro area, uh, it was tied for uh, second highest rate of growth in the nation uh, between 2019 and 2020. And I know many of you all see it. I see, I know with traffic and everything. Uh, and so we understand that, that there's, uh, there's needs for infrastructure and there's, uh, there's really a high payoff uh, for being able to, to support. So today, uh, we are going to be de dedicating more than $9 million uh, to support uh, continued economic growth in Winter Haven, including $6.4 million uh, through Florida's Job Growth Grant Fund, as well as an additional $3 million from the Florida Department of Transportation. Now, these funds are going to specifically support uh, road improvements at the Intermodal Logistics Center, which is one of the largest industrial parks uh, served by rail in the entire country. Uh, by making these road improvements really going to uh, provide important linkages, uh, we're going to be improving access to more than 1,200 acres of industrial area that will attract new businesses and generate new jobs for the community. Um, and in conjunction with this project, the city is extending its fiber optic infrastructure, resulting in high-speed internet access for site tenants, making the area more marketable for a variety of companies. And this strategic location of this project in the fast-growing area is already attracting additional businesses. Just recently, Coca-Cola announced it will invest millions into one of the project's warehouses. Uh, which will create an additional 170 million jobs. And overall, this project, because of our investment at the state level, uh, will create 12, uh, 1,250 new jobs and indirectly another 3,500 jobs. And so you're talking about, between direct and indirect, close to 5,000 additional jobs. Uh, and these old jobs will be in very important fields like manufacturing, logistics, and technical services industries. And this builds off today's award, builds off our commitment uh, to job growth in Polk County. Earlier this year, City of Winter Haven received $1.46 million from three different community development block grants. And then when you look at all the funding that Polk County has received at both the municipal and county level for job growth and infrastructure so far this year, uh, we've made almost $60 million of investment in 2021 alone. And so we're, uh, we're really bullish on Polk County, and we understand that uh, – <laughs> that, that it's going to be uh, going to help uh, drive the state uh, now and into the future. And so we're also fortunate to be uh, we perform higher than the national average on virtually any economic metric uh, that, that you can think of, uh, lower unemployment. Uh, of course, if you look at the, the folks that have uh, brought businesses here, we've obviously attracted way more businesses uh, than we've repelled, and we have a lot of individuals who are bringing uh, their uh, ability to invest in our communities here by, by leaving some of the states that have not approached uh, policy in, in a rational fashion. Uh, and so we're going to continue to do that we're going to continue to capitalize off the momentum that that florida has you know i am concerned if you look at um uh, you know, a state like Florida, we have 16 consecutive months of private sector job growth. We've been below the national average for over a year at unemployment. I mean, we really should have been one of the highest 
in unemployment because if you look as COVID, uh, the, tra the, tra uh, the, the tourism and all this stuff, I mean, that was like uno number one to be able to, to, to get hit. Uh, we worked really hard to protect those jobs and those industries, you know, and as a result, we've added about a million private sector jobs since the, since the peak of the, uh, of, the, of the job losses due to the reaction to the pandemic. And then we are way, way ahead of the national average in tourism, hotel demand, travel spending, um, and air travel capacity. And so we have really been a place where people have always wanted to get to uh, not only just for, for vacation, but for permanent and for business. And so we want to continue to do that. At the same time, you look at what's happening overall on the national level with the economy, you know, this inflation is real. real. I mean, they tried to act like it was not something to worry about, that it was transitory. Uh, in fact, you're seeing it uh, permeate across all sectors of the economy. I'm really worried about gas prices going up. That's going to really hammer a lot of Floridians who have to commute to work every day. Uh, we should be using the, the resources we have in this country. We have a lot of opportunities. Instead, they're shutting down pipelines and they're doing other things. Um, and so, so that's going to be a, a real big concern. We're going to keep doing our job. We're going to make sure we're going in a good direction. Uh, but, but that inflation is something that's real. Uh, what you're seeing with, with energy and gas prices is real. And I'd like to say it's just going to peter out. But I think we're probably looking at a, um, at a winter period where, I mean, you already see Things being, you know, uh, the the supplies are not what they used to be. The ship, there's a whole host of things uh, that are really uh, having problems right now. So we're going to stay ahead of the curve in Florida, uh, but we do recognize that these are some some national macro trends uh, that we've got to keep our eye on and contend with. And so uh, our commitment is to continue to do good policy and to continue to support communities uh, like here in Winter Haven and like Polk County. That, that really do have, uh, I think, a lot going on and will have a lot going on in the future. So we've got some, uh, some folks here to be able to speak to, to what we're doing. So I wanna bring up um, uh, some of the folks that are with us today. So we have Dane Eagle uh, from the Department of Economic Opportunity. Well, I wanna thank the governor oh, for- wait, actually before that, uh, I wanna yep. present you the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Three, three million from FDOT, and then 6.4 million from uh, the governor's job growth grant fund. So that's not a bad day at the office for that <laughs> Center of Winter Haven. You in there? You got it? 